In this video, I will go over how to set up Open Media Vault on Proxmox, then configuring a network attached share. To get the ISO file, start by heading over to Open Media Vault. Here you can click Download, followed by Stable, then you will be taken to SourceForge.net. Here the download should start. When the file has finished downloading, head back to Proxmox. Navigate to Local, then ISO Images, and click Upload. In the Upload window, click Select File to open a file explorer. Navigate to where the Open Media Vault ISO file is downloaded. Then select it and click Open. And then click Upload. When that is done, you can create the virtual machine. Click Create VM. In the General tab, give the virtual machine a name. You can also select it to start at boot if you wish. In OS, select the Open Media Vault ISO file for ISO image. Then skip past system over to disks. The only thing I will add right now is the disk where Open Media Vault will be installed. But you can add more disks in this step if you wish to. You can edit CPU and memory if you wish. Default also works. Move over to confirm and click finish. To give Open Media Vault more storage, you can navigate to your virtual machine, click hardware, add, then hard disk in the drop down menu. Select where you wish to store the hard disk, and then how many gigabytes you wish to allocate to it. Then click add. If, on the other hand, you wish to use a USB hard drive, click add, then USB device. In the pop up menu, switch over to use USB vendor slash device ID. And in the drop down menu, select which USB device you wish to attach, then click add. You can now start the installation. Open a console window and start the virtual machine. In the first window, you can either wait for the timer to expire or click enter on install. Navigate to the language you wish to use, then press enter to select it. Next, you can configure your localization settings. The most important part here to get correct is your key map settings. After Open Media Vault has configured some network settings, you can give it a host name. For domain name, unless you have a domain controller, just let it stay at local. Then type in a password. This will only be for the root user via terminal. If you have more than one hard drive attached, you will be asked to select which hard drive you wish to install on. For package manager, select the country you're in or whichever is nearest you. And for the archive mirror, deb.debian.org works just fine. You do not need to add a proxy. When the installation has run its course, you will get a message that installation is finished. Click enter on continue. If you keep the console window open, you can see the IP address of Open Media Vault once it has started up again. Take the IP address over to a web browser and type it into the address bar. To log in, use the default username of admin and the default password is Open Media Vault. If you wish to set a static IP address, navigate to Network, Interfaces, select your interface, then click Edit, and under IPv4, change from DHCP to static. Now you can type in the IP address you wish to use, the net mask, and the gateway. And when you're done, scroll down and click save. When this is done, you will get a message about pending configuration changes. You can hit apply, check confirm, and click yes. When this is done, you will be disconnected from Open Media Vault. To connect to Open Media Vault again, take the new IP address and type it into the address bar, and you will get the login window again. Now to create the network attached share. Navigate to storage, then click disks. To make sure a disk is ready to use, select it, then click wipe disk. Check the confirmation box, then click yes, followed by quick. This will delete everything on the disk. Next up, navigate to file systems. Click the blue plus, then create. Under device, select the disk you wish to use. For type, ext4 is just great. Click save when ready. When Open Media Vault is finished creating the file system, you will be taken over to a new menu where you can mount it on your system. Under file system, select the hard drive you just configured. Then click save and yes in the pop-up menu. You can then click apply, check the confirmation box and click yes. You will not be thrown out this time. You can now navigate to shared folders and click the blue plus. Give your share a name, select which hard drive you wish it to be on, and you can also change the permissions if you wish to. Click save when you're happy. Then you can apply the configuration changes yet again. Now to enable the SMB share. 
Navigate to Services, SMB, slash CFS, then Settings. Here click Enable, then scroll down to save. Now navigate to Shares, hit the blue plus, check Enable, select which folder you wish to share, then scroll down and click Save. And apply configuration again. And then one last thing, create a user. Navigate to Users, click Users again, then the blue plus, and create. Give it a username and password. You can also add it to a bunch of permission groups if you wish to. Click Save when you're happy. Then apply configuration one final time. You should now be able to access your share. The username and password is the one you just created. I hope this was of some use. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.